question? Lord Watson of Invergowrie. <laughs> my Lord, I beg leave to ask the question standing in mind about the order paper. My Lords, we will always support schools so they can stay open five days a week. Alongside the additional £4 billion that we are investing in schools' core funding in this financial year, the Energy Bill Relief Scheme will protect schools from high energy costs over the winter. There is further support available in cases of serious financial difficulty, and we encourage schools who are struggling to come forward to the Department to discuss this. My Lord, it is a major failure of government support for children's learning that some schools are even considering closing for one day a week to save on uh, crippling costs. And the noble ban, as the Minister mentions, the £4 billion uh, already committed to this year. But that is not enough, because a recent survey by the National Association of Head Teachers found that 90 per cent of schools expected to run out of money by the beginning of the next academic year. So can I ask the noble Baroness and Minister, will she commit uh, that she and her fellow DfE ministers will fight their corner with the Treasury to ensure that sufficient funding goes to schools to enable them to at least maintain current levels of provision? Well, um, the, I would respond to the noble lord in two ways. The noble lord is well aware that as a nation we face incredibly difficult uh, decisions in terms of uh, our public expenditure uh, and uh, the fiscal challenges that we face. But as a department, we are always uh, on the side of children. We are always on the side of teachers, and we do everything and use evidence in every way we can to make our case. <coughs> agree that schools are an important part of every community. They also contain a large part of things like playing fields, theatres, etc. What is the government doing to make sure that these are available to the community outside the school day? And can we have an assurance that these will not be cut in the name of making sure budgets are balanced? Well, I absolutely agree with the noble lord that schools are an incredibly important part of their um, local communities. Obviously, the government's uh, position is that it will be up to the individual school to decide how they use their assets, but, but clearly those assets can bring in additional revenue for a school, so I'd be most surprised if they cut them at the present time. will not succeed unless schools are fully funded, and that means in terms of teachers and other staff salaries, as well as the issue of energy bills and all other costs which the noble lady, the minister, has mentioned. Can I repeat the question from my noble friend and say, will the noble lady make strenuous representations on the absolute need to fully fund school budgets? We always make strenuous uh, recommendations on that. I think perhaps I was sensitive uh, to the noble lord's uh, phrase. I think he used the term fight. You know, we're trying to work collaboratively to get to the best answer for the country. We have seen in new figures produced today, the cost of basic foodstuffs has gone up by a massive amount. So can the noble lady, the minister, say what the government is doing to ensure that school meals are not losing some of their nutritional value for the children who need it so much? Well, again, um, the government works closely with schools, but ultimately it is within um, the school's own uh, responsibilities to um, organise and fund um, their school meals uh, from their core funding. My Lords, 98 per cent of the 630 head teachers surveyed by the Association of School and College Leaders have said they are going to have to make savings to meet rocketing costs of energy, food and school supplies. Two thirds of them believe that they will have to cut support staff and 17 are having to consider closing a day a week with a devastating impact on families and children. Doesn't she find it astonishing that despite several suggestions of ways to provide funding that would keep schools open, such as making private schools help shoulder the costs, abolishing non-dom status or a windfall tax on the energy companies, that ministers are refusing to even consider these options when such pressures are being faced by our schools right now? Well, as I said in my opening response, the Department is absolutely 
uh, committed to supporting schools. We've worked through our school resource management uh, teams and saved over a billion pounds um, so far and our uh, school resource management strategy sets out to save work with schools to save another billion pounds. I think what we see in the school sector is pressure on all schools. I don't uh, dispute that for a second but some schools working finding it uh, easier than others and I think we need to work to understand how we can share that best practice across the whole sector. Bear in mind that <laughs> Lady the Minister, who knows very well uh, that there are a number of schools who employ specialist staff who help children who have difficulty in schools. Many of these children come from disturbed homes or have particular problems in their own lives. Could the noble Lady the Minister assure uh, the House that the Department will continue to place an emphasis upon these kind of staff so these children are just not lost to the education system? The Noble Lord raises as ever uh, an important point and obviously we will be able to say more about that in our responses to a number of the reviews um, into this area towards the end of this year. But he will also be aware that we've raised uh, funding for high needs um, uh, uh, by, nine, by £1 billion to £9.1 billion. We remain very committed to that area. My noble friend, ask the Treasury to bear in mind that um, since the Second World War, the proportion of national wealth devoted to education has risen by a comparatively small amount, infinitely less than the amount devoted to uh, the NHS, for example. Uh, could I also ask my noble friend whether there is any substance in the recent reports that the government is at long last considering serious uh, reform of the educational system, including the introduction of the British Baccalaureate? Um, well, um, my noble friend is um, right in terms of the share of national um, wealth. The, the, uh, in relation to the British Baccalaureate, um, the department is obviously um, considering the remarks uh, made by the Prime Minister and we will be reverting in due course. Friend Lord Watson, the Minister said that schools are going to have to suffer because of the because the economy has been trashed by the Conservative government. Uh, are, we living, are we living in a parallel universe where the leadership of this country have got heated swimming pools in their second homes? Oh. Well, yes, yes, you can owe away, but that's true. Whereas swimming pools and schools are being closed down and children who desperately need school, free school meals are not getting them. This is a total disgrace. I think that the Noble Lord was in a parallel universe because I certainly <laughs> never used uh, the language that he quoted back at me and I hope he will accept that that is the case. Uh, schools had the largest uh, increase um, in funding, 5.8% uh, in cash terms in the current year. We've increased uh, starting teacher salaries by 8.9% outside London. The noble lord can shake his head, but those are the facts. Minister, assure the House that full funding will be made available for the increases in salary to which she has just referred, so that schools don't have to use their existing budgets to pay salaries, pay these increases in salaries, and as a consequence will be unable to keep schools open five days a week. Yeah, good point. Yeah. Well, I think the noble lady may be aware that the Institute for Fiscal Studies uh, has commented uh, that in the current year they see the salary increases as being affordable by schools. Can I take the noble lady back to nutritious school meals? She may be aware of distressing reports of some children turning up to school with empty lunch boxes uh, because they're on uh, families are on universal credit or their household um, income is more than 7,400, which is the cut-off point for free school meals. Could I ask her, press her further, what is being done to make sure that no child spends a school day hungry? Yeah, yeah. 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 The number of children who uh, are in receipt of free school meals is at the highest level it's ever been, 37% of the school population. Is number one priority. So school budgets should be the very last place 
the government looks to make savings, particularly after children had such a terrible time during the pandemic. I don't know a single state school that continued to provide a full timetable during the lockdown, and children from poor or overcrowded homes or those with special needs will find their lives blighted forever. So the government needs to do much, much more to sort this out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not entirely clear what the noble lords um, question was, but I would just say that the government does work very closely with schools to support them to do this, and the balance that we need to strike is to make sure that schools are using funding as efficiently as possible, and we need to understand the pressures under which they operate.